and that man was beaten. And I hear that train of coming. That man was beaten. That man was tortured. That man was hung on a cross. And during that entire time that he was tortured and beaten, he was thinking about every every person that had ever been alive and every person that would be alive. Knowing that we are born into a curse called sin. That sin is disobedience to God's word. That sin is our prideful and haughty nature. The self-conceited nature that is man. But when he was hung on that cross, after nails were driven into his hands, driven into his wrists, covered in blood from the crown of thorns that was placed on his head, from the many scourge marks on his back, in great and I would say agonizing pain, he still looked up to the he still looked up to heaven and he said father forgive them for they know not what they do hey good morning guys how's everything going it is a wonderful wonderful morning absolutely beautiful outside um i'm out of cold brew like I, i've got some more brewing but uh I got this. I've seen some um, some advertisements on Twitch about it. Um, this is the Nitro Infused Monster Cold Brew. It's actually pretty good. Uh, this is the Sweet Black. There's only like 10 calories in it. Um, so, hashtag not sponsored. But it actually is pretty good. Um, a little expensive for my taste. I prefer to brew my own. I brew my own. I pay like 12 bucks for couple of bags of coffee and I've gotten two three I think I'm on my fourth gallon that I've made so it's much more you know convenient to brew your own but this was actually pretty good um, considering the fact that I don't have any brew and I am already I already finished my first and I am on to my second coffee <laughs> uh, but how is everybody doing this morning how is everything going um, today is the first day of school, so there is nobody here. Wife is at work. Um, I think, actually, I think, uh, the stepson, the oldest stepson is actually here, but, um, I believe he went back to sleep, so, um, we need to get all of this stuff pulled up. Um, the verse of the day is probably not going to pull up uh, the the channel or the thing that I need because you know it, it's like that sometimes. But for today's verse of the day, we are going to be in Matthew uh, chapter six, specifically verses uh, thirty. Uh, it's specifically verse 34, uh, that is the verse of the day, it's exclamation point B-O-D in the chat, uh, because I found out, like we just said the other day, that if you do exclamation point B-O-T-D, you actually get chapter verses verse of the day. I'm curious what that is, actually. Uh, let me go ahead and type that in here. What is chapter verses verse of the day? Uh, chapter verses verse of the day is 1 Samuel 16, 17, or 16, 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him for the Lord sees not as man sees man looks on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart so um, very interesting interesting take um, if it's if somebody was actually do uh, my outward appearance and look at my outward appearance they'd probably think uh, what is this guy all about? I um, mean, I've got tattoos and um, a little bit chubby. 
but uh you know man man judges by the outward appearance god judges by the heart i can only pray that uh, my heart is well and my heart is good and that god finds my heart well so um i do want to get into a morning prayer um before we get into the verse of the day before we like start discussing that um so if you're here if you'll bow your heads with me i'd appreciate it dear heavenly father i just pray as we come to you i pray for your guidance and wisdom in discerning your word and father god i thank you for all of the blessings that you've placed upon my life father god i know that I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I fail. And I know you're probably sitting up there face palming every, team, every single time I do. But I want you to know that I have a heart for you. I struggle every day and I ask myself every day if what I'm doing is right. If what I'm doing is according to your will. And I thank you. I thank you for being there for me. I thank you for loving me. Because I know that I'm not worthy of that love. But you said on you know, when when you were on the cross and they were driving those nails into your hands, you said, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." And I'm gonna hold on to that because I do know what I, I I do know that you know there are things that I need to take out of my life and there are things that I need to do to get closer to you. So that being said, if there be any any kind of um, sin or anything in my life that is contrary to your teaching and any kind of sin that prevents me from being able to reach you, Father, I ask that you forgive them. Father God, I pray that you cleanse me, let you wash me in your blood. I love you and I thank you for all of the blessings that you've placed in my life. And those are the things that give me strength to go on living and give me strength to go on each day. Father God, I, I thank you for your love and your mercy. And I pray for any of those in chat, any of those that listen to the Devo on YouTube. Father God, I pray that I pray that if there be any sickness, that you heal them. And we stand on the promise that by your stripes we are healed. Father God, I pray that if there be any kind of mental health, any kind of anguish, anxiety, or anything like that, Father God, I pray that you come down and you comfort those raging thoughts, comfort those that stress, and just let them know that they are loved, Lord. Father God, I pray that if there be any, any spiritual confusion, any kind of spiritual doubt, Father, I pray that you come down and you show yourselves to be real. I pray that you come down and you, you break that heart that needs to be broken. So that it can be real, rebuilt anew. I know in many cases that you've broken me and you, you've rebuilt me and you've shattered me. I just pray that the pieces, the pieces left are not so small that they're falling through the cracks. I thank you and I praise you and once again Father as I dive into your word as I begin to digest your word and as I begin to explain your word I pray that you you lift me up I pray that you anoint my tongue so that I can explain explain in plain English and explain in understandable words Father God I pray that you be there be with each one of my viewers and I pray that you bless them as much as you've been blessing me I thank you and I praise you in Jesus holy name amen all right so let's go ahead and jump into the verse of the day and then we're gonna get into some gameplay um, I kind of got lost in vintage story the other day so i um, kind of curious on how I'm going to be able to get out <laughs> um, and get back to base. And I'm still looking for limestone. So 
But let's jump into the verse of the day and cue the transition. And that's what I thought. Verse of the day today is Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So let's open this up. Let's look at it in context, shall we? There we are. Uh, do not worry um, this is actually a couple of different things um, this was shortly after uh, this was actually during the um, the Sermon on the Mount uh, and I believe that I've gone over this through another verse of the day but um, it, it it really pays to actually revisit this a couple of times um, because we do end up dealing with situations where these kind of things um, it, it really ends up getting to us uh, we worry about like uh, we worry about money we worry about clothes we worry about food and we just worry about things in general because that is the nature of humanity you know we we worry about where everything is going to come from and so on and so forth but it says here do not worry and one of the things that i've kind of touched on is in the bible it actually says do not worry do not be afraid um 366 times and that is one time for every day of the year including on leap year so God really wants to stress that for us not to be afraid, for us not to worry, for us not to fear, because fear is, fear ends up holding us back. Fear ends up holding us um, into the point where we don't do what we need to do. We don't do what we're called to do because we're afraid of what's going to happen. We're afraid of, you know, what people are going to think, so on and so forth. And... <clears throat> It says not to worry. It says not to fear because God knows that if we fear, if we worry, then it's going to end up holding us back from the plan that he has for us. And I can only pray that I am able and I am willing to take up my cross, to follow him and to deal with what he has planned for my life. I have no idea. I can't understand that plan. I am not God. I just know that I am walking with him and I'm walking with him willingly and I'm letting him take control of everything that I do. So let's open and let's look at this verse and let's read. Uh, we're going to start here with verse 25 um, and then we're going to go to our verse of the day, which is verse 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And I'm going to stop and I want to examine that just a minute. Is can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour of hour to your life? The truth of the matter is, worry and stress and everything else, it does the exact opposite. Worry and stress is actually one of the main contributors to heart disease. And unfortunately, I need to take into consideration and I need to start practicing what I preach because I worry about things all the time. But I'm trying to let go and let God. In verse 28, it goes, And why do you worry about clothes? Why do you worry about the things that you were going to wear? See how the flowers of the field grow? 
They do not labor. They do not spin. And yet not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. I love when Jesus says this. And he's just calling out those that are, you know, don't have that faith that they need. It's uh, he says, "Oh, you of little faith." It's it, it's hilarious when he does it. So he continues here, and he goes back to what he says in verse twenty-seven. So do not worry, saying, "What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear?" For the pagans, the atheists, you know, the ones that are not following God, they run after all of these things. They worry about all of these things. But your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. And on my Facebook group, um, and I mean, even my Facebook profile, the, the banner is a quote from C.S. Lewis. It says, seek ye first, or seek first the things that come first, and the second things will be added on to you. But seek the second things, and you'll end up losing the first things and the second things. And this kind of goes along with it. All right. Seek first his kingdom. And we have a train coming in. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first his righteousness. And all other things will be added to you. And it comes to our verse of the day. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry what tomorrow brings. Do not worry about the stresses of tomorrow. Do not worry about what tomorrow is going to deal with. You know, do not do not worry about what tomorrow, like what problems you're going to end up facing tomorrow. Instead, worry about today. Worry about getting into the Bible. Worry about getting into the Word. Worry about your devotional. Worry about you know all of these things. Worry about what you have to deal with today. Because today it has its own trouble. Today has its own issues. And if you're worrying about tomorrow, along with the issues that you have to, de- have to do today, then you're going to deal with nothing but stress and anxiety and fear and doubt. And I, I'm I'm guilty of this. I'm so guilty of this. I worry about you know how far my paycheck is going to stretch next week, or I wonder how you know if I'm going to end up going into the the red again, and just I feel this every single day. And I'm urging everybody that's viewing, and I'm urging each one of my viewers today to kind of look at that. How much how much are you worrying about what is going on tomorrow? What is going on next week? What is going to have to go on next month? And instead of worrying, instead of stressing, instead of all of this other stuff, I, I just urge you to to pray about it to give the the worries of tomorrow to give the worries of next week to give the worries of next month to God yeah the the song the the country song let Jesus take the wheel 
and, and yeah, there is a situation. I, both, I posted a meme in Discord. <laughs> it's uh, Jesus take the wheel. It's not that wheel. Jesus the steering wheel. But understand that maybe, just maybe, and, and this is this might be kind of crazy on my part, but just maybe Jesus is taking that one wheel because he wants you to turn the other way. And he wants you to get off the path that you're on because he has another plan. He has another path. So, I'm going to go ahead and type this in here. <clears throat> Jesus, God, he has a plan for each and every one of us. The only thing that we have to do, and... and it's sometimes a little bit hard considering the fact that you know we want to be the author of our own destiny we want to be uh the author of our own fate we want to have so many different plans um but we need to let go we need to let go and let god you know you hear that and you you probably hear that before and you probably you know um, you probably dealt with that, but it's let go and let God. Let go trying to deal with your own issues. Let go trying to deal with your own fate. Let go trying to fight on a day-to-day -day basis trying to figure out what you should you know how you're gonna eat how you're gonna keep the roof over your head and all of that and let God work now I'm not gonna I'm not saying it don't don't like take me wrong and don't misquote me here I'm not saying sit on your butt and you know think that God's gonna come to your rescue you have to put in work too okay Because there's a difference between letting God do his thing and just being lazy. So, and that's kind of like some of the argument with the, the prosperity gospel is, you know, if you just do this, you just do that, then God's going to come in and bless you. Well, I believe 100% that God's going to bless you, but I also believe that you have to do work yourself. You know, and, and God's not going to come in. God's not going to give, you know, he's not going to drop off a Jaguar XJR in your driveway. You know, there's a, one of the issues with the prosperity gospel is it, it's kind of saying that the gospel is going to give you anything and everything that you ever want. No, it's not. The gospel, it's going to give you things according to God's will. And if, according to God's will, yeah, you know, according to God's will, it's going to make sure that you are food, you are fed. It's going to make sure that you are clothed. It's going to make sure that, you know, there are certain aspects. Um, and if you are working according to God's will, then God is going to bless that. God is going to make sure that you don't have to worry about you know um, this or that God is going to make sure that things fall into place and I've seen it I, I've experienced it but I also know from personal experience that if I just sit back on my rear end and expect God to actually move then yeah especially if I'm not going to church or I'm not fellowshipping with other people or if I'm not in my word then he's he's not going to do much of anything because I'm not seeking after him yeah you know, I'm kind of getting on a rabbit trail here and the last thing I want to do is get onto a rabbit trail the truth of the matter is God wants all of us to
to live a good life and to live life more abundantly. He does not want for every Christian to have, you know, some million, two million dollars that they're going to pour into themselves. That that's that's not his thing. You know, if he does give us something, if he does give us, uh, if he does give us, if he does end up blessing us, he wants us to bless others with that blessing. And being a Christian is not going to be all sunshine and rainbows because it does specifically say that we will suffer. We will deal with, you know, issues in this life. So I, I, I don't want anybody, anybody to believe that, you know, everything is going to be all peachy keen because there are going to be trials. In fact, suffering is one of the ways that God actually, or one of the tools that God uses to help refine us. Because in, su in suffering, it teaches us dependence on him. In suffering, it teaches us humility. And we've touched on humility a couple of times um, in the past week or so. But a prosperity gospel where it's all about me, that doesn't do anything. It doesn't push anything. The truth of the gospel. And I know I'm saying gospel a lot, and I'm going to go into the gospel message just a little bit here because it kind of goes on to what we're saying here. The truth of the gospel is that God wanted us he wanted us to come back to him he wanted to he wanted us to kind of stray away from this conceited self world view that we've seen so much here recently The gospel message is that we have all sinned and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word came down and became flesh. He lowered himself from that heavenly throne and he took on the body of a man and we have another train but he took on the body of a man and that man was beaten and I hear that train of coming That man was beaten. That man was tortured. That man was hung on a cross. And during that entire time that he was tortured and beaten, he was thinking about every, every person that had ever been alive and every person that would be alive. Knowing that we are born into a curse called sin. That sin is disobedience to God's word. That sin is our prideful and haughty nature. The self-conceited nature that is man. But when he was hung on that cross, after nails were driven into his hands, driven into his wrists it's covered in blood from the crown of thorns that was placed on his head from the many scourge marks on his back in great 
in I would say agonizing pain he still looked up to the he still looked up to heaven and he said father forgive them for they know not what they do That is the truth of the gospel. In John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The other day I broke that down into four parts. And those four parts are the core of Christianity and the core of what we need to know in order to be a Christian. And that's God loved. So God gave. If we believe, then we'll receive. So if there be anybody in chat, anybody watching on YouTube that doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior, that doesn't accept, doesn't listen, or doesn't know the love that he had and if there be anybody in chat or anybody watching on YouTube that wants to know that that wants to see that you can get a hold of me on discord you can message me on twitch or if you just want to keep it, you know, if you just want to keep it to yourself, that's completely fine. I just, I, I pray that you bow your heads with me. You pray the sinner's prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I have... I've not achieved the glory and the perfection that you asked for in the Bible. But I also know that you gave your only Son, your only Son, Jesus Christ, that he might die the, die, uh, die the death that I deserve. I thank you for that mercy. I thank you for that love. Father God, I lift up your name. And I pray, I pray that you bring Jesus Christ into my heart, into my body, into my soul. Father God, I pray that I might be a light unto others. I pray that you begin breaking down the walls and casting out the things that are not appealing to you. I pray that you begin building me anew. I pray that daily you give me the motivation to seek after you. To love you. And I pray that tomorrow I might be a better person, I might be a better man than I was today. Or a better man or a better woman than I was today. Father God, I thank you and I praise you and I lift your name on high. Once again, Father, I'm going to pray for any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, for any of those that are in chat or any of those that are watching on YouTube. I stand on the promises that you've given in the Bible. I pray that they have the faith to accept the healing that you've promised they will receive. I pray for any of those that are suffering from mental anguish pray that you come down and you you comfort those feelings of depression you comfort those feelings of anxiety and with bipolar I pray that you comfort those racing thoughts
I lift you up and I praise your holy name because you said that if anything, that if I asked anything in your name and I'm asking all of this in Jesus' name, and I know this to be your will, God, because you, this goes along with the will that you have established in the Bible. So I stand on those promises in the Bible. I stand on those distinctions in the Bible, Father. If there be anybody in chat, anybody on YouTube that is bowing their head in agreement as I'm speaking these words, Father, I pray and I st I, I pray that you just comfort them and strengthen them because once again, Father, I'm standing on that promise that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are among them. And whether we're online, whether we're in congregation or anything like that, Father, I know that you are here and I know that you are with me. I thank you and I praise you because you are good. You are mighty. You are to be awed and respected and feared. For though your love is great, your wrath is great as well. The only thing I want to see, Father, is your love. I do not, do not ever want to see your wrath. Because your love, your 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 miraculous ways scare me as it is. To think that I might incur your wrath just terrifies me. Father God, I thank you for my viewers. I thank you for the community that I've been able to build here on Twitch. I thank you for every single one of my followers, everybody that drops by in chat. I lift you up and I praise your holy name. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Just a dreamer, a streamer, I stream my life away. Your higher power may not be God or Jesus Christ. I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. Without each other's help, there ain't no hope for us. Why can't we just not be enemies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might say I'm a dreamer. Dreaming of better days You might say I'm a streamer Streaming my life away But I'm not the only one